Well, our summer attendance has kind of reminded me of a story I heard this past week. And Claire coming back only made it more prominent that I should share it with you. A young lady was driving to uh, morning worship at her place of worship, and uh, as she was driving along, getting closer to the church, she looked down at her cell phone, and it said, no service, so she turned around and went home. <laughs> yeah. Did I do that right, Mel? <laughs> I think we got it. Friends, let me tell you this morning that I don't come up here to share the Word of God this morning with all the answers. I want you to know that I am as human as you are. And the same things that you struggle with in life, we struggle with as well. And I want you to know that in preparation for these services on Sunday, that God really speaks to my heart. And uh, this, one's, this one's a tough one. Paul to the Colossians says in verse, chapter 3, verse 23, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord and not for men. Friends, life is about choices. You can choose to try and make a difference in this world, or you can allow the world to make a difference in you. It was J.B. Phillips who paraphrased the now famous words of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold you, remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, meets all his demands, and moves towards the goal of true maturity. So with a verse like that, how can you and I make a difference in this world? <coughs> Excuse me. By choosing to live with integrity. What is integrity? Living with integrity is more than just being honest. My dictionary tells me that integrity is the quality of possessing and steadfastly adhering to high moral principles and professional standards, the state of being complete or undivided, or the state of being sound or undamaged. According to the Bible, it means that whatever you do, you work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Oscar Hammerstein II illustrated this when he talked about a picture of the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. He said he saw a picture of the statue taken from a helicopter and it showed the top of the lady's head. He was amazed at the detail there. The sculptor had done a painstaking job with Lady Liberty's hair even though he must have been pretty sure that only the birds would ever see it. He couldn't have dreamt that anyone would ever fly over her head, but the artist in him, however, finished the top of the head with as much care as he had devoted to her face, arms, torch, and everything else people see as they sail up the bay. Friends, that's integrity. When you are doing something, finish the job off perfectly. You complete the task in high quality with the highest of moral and ethical standards. So why then is integrity important? Let me share with you this morning three reasons that I think that integrity is important. First of all, without saying, it, it pleases God. It is God's intention and will that you, you and I, live out the life of God as shown in His Son, Jesus Christ. And when you do that, you please God. He is a God of high moral character, completely honest and faithful, and He expects you and I to have the same way, to live the same way. 
In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20, the Scripture says, The Lord hates people with twisted hearts, but He delights in those who have integrity. In Proverbs, uh, again, in the message translation, God can't stand deceivers, but He re relishes integrity. And that's because deception and twisted thinking is opposite to God. Sometimes we make the mistake of rationalizing away honesty, don't we? We say, what does it matter? Who will ever know? I can do this and get away with it. I can fudge a little here and there, and no one will ever know. <coughs> but God knows, and you will know. And God is the only audience you need to worry about. Scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9 says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth. What is it saying? Simply this. He's watching every breath I take, every move I make and aware of every thought I have. He never misses a beat of my heart. Even if no one ever finds out, you need to live with integrity because God knows and God cares. He delights in us when we live as He would have us live. So integrity pleases God. The second thing integrity does is affect others. <coughs> and the first people it's going to affect are the people you live with. Proverbs 27 says, Good people who live honest lives will be a blessing to their children. When we were up in North Bay a while ago, we went into Walmart and we picked up, we're picking up some supplies, and of course, um, <clears throat> they had a sale on the particular blades that I use, except it was a smaller package, and the, the one that I usually pick up carries more blades, it's more cost effective that way. And so I picked them up, and when I went through the tell, teller, I got all of the other stuff I had, and uh, the total came to $34.98 plus tax. I think it came to $39 and something. And I kind of hesitated. I looked at it and I thought, well, gee, that's odd. I got all this other stuff and it still only came to $39.98. Robin and Christopher and them were down at the other end of going through another teller. And, and I walked away and there was a young couple behind me in line next. And uh, I went walking down and I pulled the receipt out and I looked at it and I saw the mistake. Yeah, she, she had charged me for the blades but she charged me for the package that was going for $4.98. And that's why the total came to $39.98 that I had. So I looked at it and I, I went back up to her and, and I, I excused myself for butting in at, with the young couple. And they said, oh no, go ahead. And I said to the teller, I said, I think you made a mistake. I think you mischarged me for, for these blades. I know these blades cost $34.98. And she says, oh, no, I charged you the right amount. She says, show me, you know, give me your receipt. And, and so she, I gave it to her. She, showed, she looked at it. She said, see, I, I charged you for them. And I goes, yeah, but it's not the correct amount. And so she said, well, okay. She says, well, you'll have to go to customer service. So I went over to customer service, and I explained to them. And at the end of it, long story short, um, customer service was very, very appreciative and kind, <laughs> saying, sir, I think you've got to be the first in a long while <laughs> to uh, acknowledge something like that. Most people would just walk away and say, thanks for the sale, right? But I knew what it cost, and I couldn't do it. Does that make me integral? Perhaps for that moment it did. But it's something that we continue to work with. I continue to work with on a day-by-day -day basis. So my, this young couple looked at me. And the look on their face was said, are you stupid? <laughs> you know, 
really? Go away, <laughs> you know? And uh, Christopher and Tricia came up and said, Dad, that was the right thing to do. Would I have done it? I probably would have hesitated like you did, but you did the right thing. Yeah, I did the right thing, and I'm thankful that I did the right thing for that moment. God helped me to do the right things as he continues to, to lead me uh, towards him. Friends, <laughs> the people in your home need to see a pattern of integrity. Likewise, in society around you, the people in your neighborhood, your community, the people you work and play with. Proverbs 11.11 11 says, when right living people bless the city, listen, it flourishes when right living people bless the city, it flourishes. For committed Christians, there's an even greater reason to live a life of integrity. It brings people to God. It encourages people to become Christians. It moves people to Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven for it. If you want to change the world around you, then the light of integrity must shine brightly in your life and living. I read a while back about a pastor of a large congregation who gave a message one day on honesty. The next day, with his car in the shop for repairs, he took the local transit system, which is a little different from the transit systems up here, to get to his office. He steps up into the bus, hands the bus driver a $5 bill, the driver took his money and gave him a ticket and a handful of bills for change. When the pastor got to his seat and went to pull the money away, put the money away, he realized that the driver had given him far too much money back. For the rest of the trip, he, he made every attempt to convince himself that he should keep the money. Maybe God knew he needed some extra money. But, God, but his conscience would not let him off the hook. And so on the way out the door, he handed the money to the driver and he said, Look, my friend, I'm afraid you made a mistake. You've given me too much change. The driver looks at them and he says, That was no mistake, Pastor. I was in your church yesterday when you preached that sermon on honesty and I wanted to see if you were a good at practicing as, as you were at preaching. God forbid. <laughs> As the bus was stopped, he said, you know, Sunday was the first time that my wife and I entered a church. I've always thought you guys were a bunch of phonies, but I guess there's more to it than that. I'll see you next Sunday. Simple illustration. If you want to change the world around you, then you need to live with integrity. Pleases God, pleases others. Thirdly, it pleases you. Living with integrity changes you. I feel better about myself when I am honest, open, and genuine. When I live by high moral and ethical standards, I feel better about me, and I feel better about trying to change the world around me. Don't always do a good job, but I strive to do that. I received a, a, te a message from one of our members on Facebook, a cute little saying. Hit home, though. It was talking about putting your pastor on a pedestal, recognizing that he's only human and not putting him there so that if he falls, he's not falling hard, I guess. Well, friends, in all honesty, there are times when I do fall and I miss the mark, but I am thankful that people are praying and supporting, and I continue to solicit your prayers for me and for my wife and for our family. It blesses us. Proverbs 11, 5, and 6, moral character makes for smooth traveling. An evil life is a hard life. Good character is the best insurance. Mark Twain once said, one of the things about integrity is you don't have to have a long memory. 
One of the things about integrity is that you don't have to have a long memory. You never have to remember what you said to who you said it if everything you say is the absolute truth. But if you are dishonest, untruthful, and major in falsehood and distortion, then eventually you're going to get trapped and you're going to get yourself in trouble. Think about it. Evil, spelt backwards, is live. Evil, spelt backwards, is live. Anytime you and I fail to live the way God wants us to live, we are living life backwards, and that's evil. Again, says Proverbs 11, Moral character makes for smooth traveling. An evil life is a hard life. Good character is the best insurance. The best insurance policy by far is living honestly. But how do we do that? How do we live with integrity? If this is the way God wants us to do it, how do we do it? Well, first of all, we have to speak the truth. Do you do that? Do you always speak the truth? Proverbs 12, 22, the message, God can't stomach liars. He loves the company of those who keep their word. <coughs> if you can't keep your word and are truthful, then you're not going to have any successful relationships. Your friendships are going to be superficial at best. Your marriage is going to suffer. You're, you'll not be trusted at work. No one is going to put their trust in you. You need to be good to your word, and your word needs to be the absolute truth. Ephesians 4.15 in the Amplified Version says, Let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly. Always speak and express the truth in love, but never use it as a battering ram to hurt and destroy people. Don't use it to prove your case or set yourself up as a superior. As Christians, we're supposed to know the truth and the truth is supposed to set us free according to John chapter 8, 32. If you really want to make an impact on those around you and have freedom in your relationships, in your life and with those around you, then you must always live and tell the truth with no exceptions. Proverbs 4.24 says, Don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless banter, white lies, and gossip. A person with integrity doesn't do those things. They don't gossip about others. They don't tell little white lies. They don't say one thing and do another. They live open, honest, and transparent lives, and they deeply impact other people for the good. So, always speak the truth. Secondly, stand for the truth. Young people today are stepping out for justice in this world. And we need to be solid in standing for truth. Our responsibility is never to oppose the truth, but to stand for the truth at all times. Sometimes you have to do more than just speak up, don't you? You need to stand up for the truth because living in integrity means taking action. The big debate today is over human rights rather than truth. People get all worked up when they think their rights are being ignored and taken away. But most people don't seem to be particularly bothered about the need for truth. A lot of folks fail to realize that where there are rights, there are also wrongs. We don't want to admit some things are just plain wrong and there's no way around it. But if you are a person of integrity, you have to come to grips with the fact that there is an evil force in this world and we call the devil who delights in doing wrong things and sugarcoating them to, be, to appear right. There comes a time when you have to stand up for the truth, my friends. Love and truth form a good leader. Sound leadership is founded on loving integrity. So if you want to change the world around you, 
then you have to get these two things in balance in your life, love and integrity. You have to be able to speak the truth in love, but make sure those, uh, that it is always balanced by real love. And here's the hard part in a world such as ours. is that we have to stay pure, holy. I want to be holy. We've sung it about it so beautifully this morning. Purity of mind, purity of body, purity of motives. Paul in the, to the Philippians says in chapter two, verse 15, you are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of crooked and perverse people. Let your lives shine brightly before them. When God wants to change the world, he looks for people of integrity. That's what he did when he looked at the world once and decided it was so corrupt and evil that he would have to destroy it with a flood. He found a man called Noah, a good man, a man of integrity in his community, a man who walked with God. So how do we become people of integrity? It's not easy. It's not easy. There is no magic pill or bullet that will give you a life of integrity. There's power for the process, a power that comes from God alone. Listen. Judy shared part of it in Scripture this morning. God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and for goodness. This power was given to us through knowledge of the one who called us by his own glory and integrity. Through his glory and integrity, he has given us his promises that are of the highest value. Through these promises, you will share in the divine nature because you have escaped the corruption that sinful desires cause in the world. Because of this, because of this, Make every effort to add integrity to your faith. I've been greatly challenged by this message in preparation of it. And I want to extend that challenge to you today to become a change agent for God in your home, in your church, in your community, and in, your, in this world. God desires for you that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. Before the worship team comes up and prepares our hearts, to reflect upon the beautiful words of refiner's fire. I wonder if we can just take a moment and bow silently in prayer. Close your eyes. Don't worry about the person around you sitting next to you. Take yourself into the presence of the Holy One. Ask him to search your heart. Ask him to show you where you missed the mark. And perhaps then you'll be able to share this prayer. Lord Jesus, I really do want to be a person of integrity. I want to help you change the world around me. 
but I need your help and power to do it. Forgive me for those times I have compromised the truth and failed to stand for that which I know to be right. Please forgive me for making wrong choices and help me to make right choices today, tomorrow, and in the future. Help me always to speak the truth in love. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Refiner's fire. My soul's one desire. God speaks to my heart this morning. I hope he's speaking to yours. And if for any reason at all you need to come to this place of prayer this morning, I invite you to come. To lay it all before him. And allow him to change you as he works to change me.